from Durban, Trexwork, and I will be speaking to you from the Christian perspective on Is Jesus God? And in my presentation, I will tell you what my aims and objective is and what the purpose of me here today. The subject is, Is Jesus God? The question, as a Christian, I cannot answer that question as is, is Jesus God? And as I go on, I'll tell you why. Because <clears throat> we have to add something to it before I could answer that question. Is Jesus God? As a Christian, <clears throat> I believe that Jesus had a pre-existence and you're fully aware, you've been taught here also, but a Christian belief in God. And so Jesus is God prior to the incarnation or the virgin birth, which <coughs> Surah 3 and Surah 19 of your Quran and Matthew chapter 1 and also Luke chapter 1 in my Bible in the Gospels tells me so. After he was conceived in the womb of Mary, then he was not just God, he was fully God and perfect man. Okay, you understand that from the Christian perspective, because anybody asked me the question, tell me, Pastor, is Jesus God? I said, let me explain. Some questions, as you know, cannot be answered with a simple yes or a no. I'll give an example of some questions that you can never answer with a simple yes or a no. Understanding and answering Islam. What do I mean by understanding and answering Islam? We need to have a basic understanding, both you and I, both Christians and Muslims. It's sad that I find that many of my Christian colleagues do not have an understanding of Islam. And also at the same token, I am disheartened by very many Muslim friends that I have. They have a very distorted view and teaching of the Christian faith. Now the purpose of my presentation, my goal in this presentation is twofold. In understanding Islam, to give an answer to Muslims based on evidence why I believe in the deity of Jesus Christ as revealed in the Bible and also alluded to in the Quran. Okay? That's number one. <clears throat> Secondly, to examine the merits of some of the arguments used by Muslims I have met and or corresponded with over the past 25 years and to respond from a Christian perspective. Is Jesus God? When a Christian talks to you, you have in your mind the Quran. And the Christian has in his mind the Bible. And that's important to understand, to have a good dialogue and a good discussion amicably and very lovingly. Now, they are. <clears throat> Islam and Christianity. There's something that cross over, and here we agree 100%. The virgin birth and the Messiah we have no problem, but, but, the understanding of al Masih, Isa Maryam, and the understanding of the virgin conception and of the virgin birth, uh, and that's most important. When I was here last time, I said to the students, when I was about 20 years old, there was a girl from Cape Town, Malay girl. She came, she liked me. If you see my photograph when I was young, very handsome. Right, you know, you know the program, The Bold and the Beautiful? 
you know the program on TV? Because of me, they're going to start a new program, The Bold and the Handsome. Okay. So now it's very important for us to understand. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna discuss this. Okay? We're gonna discuss this part here. Now you understand, yeah. All in the red. Okay? God has no son. Jesus is not God. Jesus is not crucified. There's a scripture <coughs> verse from Quran. Quran. Yeah, let's see on this side. Okay, Jesus. Yeah, Christians believe Jesus is not God. Islam does not. Jesus is God, I've explained to you. And Jesus was crucified. Islam does not. So, as much as we say, Mama just reminded me just now, we're having some social and we're having some fellowship. The closest to the believers are Christians. That's what the Quran says. At the same time, although we are so close, we are still far apart. Now you see, yeah, on, on where the black, okay? Where the Quran says and the scripture verses are there, surahs are there, God does not take unto himself a wife. God begged not or not begotten, okay? It is blasphemy to say God got a wife. He has no consort. And if he has no consort, then how can he have a son? Now, all those things that you see in the black on this side, on your side, all the things you see in the black there, we say to you, we agree with you. We agree 100% of what's written there in the black. Christians also do not believe that God has a wife. Christians also believe that God did not have a son in a biological sense, the physical son, to a sexual relationship with a wife. We'll talk about that just now. But it's important to understand this. There's very little in it. Yet with the thing that is common, like the virgin birth and Halma see Jesus the Messiah, yet we are still falls apart when it comes to explanation and the meaning. I will show you this now as I go through that many of my good friends, scholars, Muslim scholars, when asked, they do not explain. What they do is they try to explain it away. And that is most embarrassing. Belief in one God. Now, Belief in one God, it means that the three faiths, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, there are three faiths who believe in one God. It's called monotheism. And the monotheism is the belief in one God and three religions, the three theistic religions, the only three in the world that believes in one God. I've heard people say Christians believe in more than one God. I heard people say Christians believe in three gods. We'll talk about that just now, say not three. And overcome that People like Dr. Muhammad Assad, people like Muhammad Yusuf Ali, Abdullah Abdullah Yusuf Ali, have changed the tree into the word Trinity, saying not Trinity. And nowhere in the Quran, in the Arabic, is the word Trinity found in the Quran. But to evade that, do not say three, then, Yusuf Ali, Muhammad Assad, and others have put in their trinity, distressed trinity. Now, one God. In the Old Testament, 
And they taught off Moses, you know that, and they quoted to me by Muslims all the time. And I'm just gonna, just gonna confirm. In the Psalms, it's about David. In the New Testament, in Jew, Jesus himself says, there's one God that's been quoted to me hundreds of times by Muslims. The Apostle Paul, who Muslims say, He's a founder of Christianity, and he was the one that brought all the nonsense into Christianity. He himself says there is one God many times in the Bible. And Apostle James, the half-brother of Jesus Christ, he also confers there is one God. Why well, I'm telling you this, so that we don't have a misconception that Christians believe in three gods. The, the Though you and I believe in one God, God is revealed in the Quran is one God. The God is revealed in himself in the Bible, one God. But where is the problem? The problem lies what you call Tawid, the strict monotheism, Unitarian monotheism, and what we see in the Bible revealed in the scriptures where God revealed himself as three persons, but in one in essence or nature. I had to clarify these things before I proceed because I heard many people say, how can three gods be one, one God? No Christian that I know believes there's three gods in one God. There's three gods, three persons in the Godhead with one nature. Okay, <clears throat> we'll go about that just now. <clears throat> Some of the scriptures say there's no God. Is Jesus God? I've got three photographs there of the late Ahmadidat, the founder of this organization. Was a very was a very good friend of mine in the late sixties, especially at the old Madrasa Arcade. Uh, sorry, old old office at the Madrasa Arcade. Then after that, very little interactions at this place because of some political reasons. Then I got the Ayub Karim, who is is probably he claims that he is carrying the legacy of Ahmad Didat. He's not far away from here, just across the road. Then you got Zakir Naik. He's from Bombay, India. Very close associate of Dr. Syed. <clears throat> and is Jesus God? They tell you, Jesus never said, I am God. They are correct. They are right. They are correct and they are right. When they are not correct and when they are not right is when they challenge me as a Christian offering me a Bible three, three four translations and then tell me, show me where in this Bible Jesus said unequivocally, one, one, two, three words, I am God. Ayub Karib and Zakir Naik go far to say, if you can show me, if you can show me those three words where Jesus in his own mouth said in the Bible, I am God, I will give up Islam, and I will become a Christian. That was Zakir Naik and Ayub Karim says. A self-defeating argument. What is a self-defeating argument? You aim at somebody else, and eat yourself. That's a self-defeating argument. In the late 60s, at the whole Madrasa Arcade, 
I had a lovely conversation, a dialogue, a discussion, not a dialogue, discussion with the presence of Mr. Wenka, very, 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 very good Arabic scholar, which I admired and respected. So, um, late number did that, and I, the late 60s, so about 69, great to 70, we are having a discussion. I asked Mr. Didat in this whole office if he believed that Jesus was the Messiah al Masih. He responded that as a Muslim, he believes Jesus is the Messiah because the Quran affirms it. Then, as usual, style of his, besides bringing a multitude of Bible translations, this time he brought me a few Quran translations. And he's given me three, which I really cherish. He's given me Muhammad Pikto. He's given me Modi and Yusuf Ali. <clears throat> those were the famous those days. So, he opened the Quran and read to me Surah 345 and told me the Quran refers to Jesus 11 times as the Messiah. And he believes that he's the Messiah. That's the first time I heard and I understood, I was still young then, that 11 times Jesus is referred to as the Messiah. As most of the time, al masih on the own, or al masih Samaria. So, those are the verses. In fact, out of nine verses, nine verses, is 11 times. In two of the verses is twice. So then I asked him to show me where in the Quran Jesus said, I am the Messiah. In those words, I am the Messiah. If you want me to show you in the Bible where Jesus said, I am God, now you show it to me in the Quran where it says, I am the Messiah. He couldn't. You know what happens then, eh? What I told you? It just boomerangs on you. It just simply boomerangs on you. As early as the late 60s. Messiah's miracle birth. And because of this conversation and because Muslims are telling us Christians all the time, show me, because they're listening to Zakir Naik, they're listening to Yahub uh, Karim here yeah, locally, they've been around, I've been recently one of the meetings here yeah, locally, and the same questions are being posed. If a Christian can show in the Bible where it says, Jesus says, I am God, so I pose the same question, you believe Jesus is the Messiah, how must he? Show me where he says, in those words, I am the Messiah, you cannot. So Messiah's miracle birth is a vital truth of the virgin birth. I'm coming to now to tell you why I as a Christian believe what I believe about Isa Maryam, or you call Nabi Isa. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Thank you. You're still pouring peace over me, yeah? Okay. So the Messiah's miracle birth is a vital truth of the virgin birth to have an understanding of Jesus Christ, of who he is. How then shall we answer? Most Christians, I'll be honest to you, most Christians will do what that man is doing. Take the head, put in the sand. Like the ostrich. Answer, we must do. You must know why you believe what you believe. 
not just what you believe. You must know why you believe what you believe. Not like some parrot fashion, because some debater you heard somewhere, you throw that at me, no. Simple question. A lot of things I don't understand, I'm going to be honest to you. But they are revealed in the Bible to you, the live in the Quran. Some things you could accept by faith. You got no time to reason and argue about it. You're not going in circles. But the very fact that other things that you can give reasonable answers to on the basis of that, you can say this. I have no answer at this point in time. Like, I don't understand our black cow eating green grass produces white milk. Honestly, I've asked some of our scientific friends. I've asked my doctor friends. I asked recently a friend of mine who is doing his PhD in bio cell, bio, uh, bio uh, some cell something, cell biology. I've asked a question, and he's also says no. Even doctors, up to now medical doctors, with all the modern technology and modern science and all the education, all the techniques, they can't even explain the miracle of ordinary childbirth. Leave alone explaining the virgin birth. So, the virgin conception and birth of Messiah Jesus. I say virgin conception because there was nothing extraordinary about the birth of Jesus to say virgin birth. It is a misnomer. It has been used over and over and over, and all of us have now using it also, and it's so easy to copy and paste. The miracle was in the conception in the womb of Mary, not the birth. There was normal gestation. There's normal waiting for a period of nine months or so. And she normal birth was normal. There's nothing miraculous about her birth. But the virgin conception was miraculous. Now, the Bible gives two references in the New Testament, the Gospels, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 25, and also Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. You know, oftentimes, I play trick on my pastor friends. Let me share this with you. I take the Quran, I open to Surah 19, and I start reading. And if you read that, about the story of how the angel Gabriel came and gave, and the, and the conversation between the angel and Mary, etc. You think you're reading from the Bible, from Luke chapter one. That's how close it is. Then in the Quran, you have Surah three and Surah nineteen, and Surah three forty-five that I'm very interested in. Where it says, whose name will be Messiah Jesus. I'm interested in that. The birth of Jesus has something to do with his messiahship. Because the angel says whose name will be Messiah, Jesus. Mary and her family have no choice in this. Okay, the Quran does not make any mention of Joseph. We can talk to her, but 